Hello, Immersion families. I'm Sarah Vanny Vento, proud coordinator of our Immersion and World Language programs, and I'm a fellow Immersion parent. Whether you are joining because you have a fifth grader or a middle schooler in Chinese or Spanish Immersion, we welcome you to our meeting about the continuation of our program. We are so excited to have you join us today as we celebrate the incredible achievements of your children and the groundbreaking work being done in our buildings. The Apoquinimic School District Dual Language Immersion Program is truly a trailblazer in the state and in the nation, and we couldn't be more proud of how your kids are embracing this unique opportunity. Their dedication and enthusiasm inspire each and every one of us every single day. As we go through today's agenda, we encourage you to participate by submitting any questions you may have by clicking on the Q&A button below your screen. Your input is very valuable to us and we want to ensure we address your thoughts and your concerns. We will be answering them throughout the presentation and also have some time at the end. Please note that we will be recording this session and we will share the recording with all our families afterwards so you can revisit at your convenience. Before we dive in, let's take a moment to introduce the team. They're all in the screen here. They are all, they've all renamed themselves. Um, so you can see their name and their title of where they are, but we're joined by the teaching and learning team. We're also gathered by school teams. So all the middle schools, Meredith, Cantwell's Bridge, um, uh, Odessa, Apo High, um, Middletown, Odessa High School, sorry, and the Choice Office as well. So we have a large group here to present all of this information to you today. Um, we want to thank you for being here and for your continued support of our program. And we look forward to a great information session. We'd like to start sharing the screen now, please. Great, thank you. <laughs> so welcome families, we're here to talk about the articulation of our program into middle school and high school. All right, next, let's look at the agenda for today. Um, first, we're gonna talk a little bit about middle school and high school immersion and where you are, and depending on where your child is in the program, like I said, we have a very diverse group that's meeting with us today. Um, some of this might be applicable to you um, next year or just a few years away. Feel free to pop in and out if you need to. We're gonna send the whole recording to you, but if parts of this are more applicable at this time for where your child is, um, obviously that's the part we want you to pay the most attention to. Uh, we're gonna talk about pathway and career connected learning opportunities. We're going to talk about the choice process for our spin uh, for our spin families because it looks a little bit different when they get into high school. Language opportunities, so for example, earning credit and the certificate of multiliteracy. We're going to talk about the opportunity to take the advanced placement test and what the timeline for that looks like, and also answer any questions that you may have. Okay, next slide. All right, so first, this should look familiar to, to a lot of our families, but we have fifth grade families that are joining us. So the way that I've organized these slides are in kind of three buckets here. So first is the dual language program classes. These are the classes that your kids have in the target language. So whether um, they're in Spanish or Chinese, that's, these are the classes that we offer. Then I have in the middle, the language assessment. So um, you'll see STAMP, and I'm sure a lot of our families are already familiar with STAMP. They've been taking this since the third, well, they've been taking a version of this since the third grade, I should say that. Um, but this is the standard measure of proficiency. And then our world language offerings, um, which change a little bit in middle school. Obviously, they are also um, subject to some availability depending on the staffing and the scheduling that we have. So for sixth grade, um, this is what it looks like. We go from a 50-50 split and we keep actually that 50-50 model of instruction of target language and English in the dual and in middle school because we have their language arts class, which is typically their, their literature class or ELA class, but this is the, the Chinese or the Spanish class, social studies in Spanish or Chinese, and also science in Spanish or Chinese. They'll be assessed with the stamp test like they are every year. Um, and then we hope at all the middle schools to be able to offer a variety of other elective courses and their related arts. And these are French, American Sign Language, Chinese, Spanish, and Japanese. So we hope to offer those as well um, as their schedule allows it to. Next slide, please. In seventh grade, um, same kind of setup here, but looks a little bit different for the language assessment. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So we still keep with the three areas, the dual language program classes, so the Spanish or Chinese language arts, their social studies in Chinese or Spanish, science in Chinese or Spanish, 
And then their language assessment, they take the stamp test um, again that year. And then they also, with, what is unique about our program is that we offer them the opportunity to take the advanced placement test in Spanish or Chinese, and it's the language and culture test. This test is administered in May by the college board, and it has um, a lot of rules that go around it. This is typically given to high school students, but what we found is that the more opportunities that kids are given to take this test earlier, um, and for us, this would be seventh grade, uh, the more times they actually see this type of test, the better off they are in scoring higher on that test. So we have had kids that have taken this in seventh grade and have scored a three, four, or five, and these are 12, 12 year olds that are taking this test, uh, 13 year olds. So we're pretty proud of the work they've done. We've had kids that have gotten those scores before um, and they're in our oldest cohort now in ninth grade, um, which is really exciting. And so they're able to take, or they're able to go into another program in high school where we're allowed to give them college credit, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, so they take the advanced placement test. And again, this is something, this is an opportunity that we're offering to our families. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but a score lower than three, what we're recommending is that they take um, in eighth grade, they'll retake the test again, the AP test, they'll have another opportunity through their, uh, science, uh, their Spanish language arts or their Chinese language arts. But if they do score a score of three or higher, then eighth grade, obviously they would take their Spanish or Chinese language class and then they could either retake it for a higher score or they could just automatically go into what we're calling the bridge program in high school. They'll, they'll have earned a credit for that. Um, again, depending on the availability of our teachers and our courses, they will be able to take French, Japanese, Chinese, Spanish, American Sign Language, and some of these are level one courses. So this is really great when it comes to like a high school credit. So they can take um, pretty much like the first half of a level one course, which is typically a high school class. Um, so they'll have that in their school as well. Can you click the next slide? Thank you. Um, eighth grade year, this is when things get really exciting. Um, and I think, actually, I think all of middle school is pretty exciting because they've worked in a 50-50 split in elementary schools. Um, and they've worked really hard in those programs. And then in middle schools, where we really see that this is able to pay off in a really big way um, through their academics, obviously, but through all of these opportunities that they have to earn college credit and do things on an advanced basis. So again, like I said, to kind of stick with the slide here, um, they have their dual language immersion classes. These stay the same. Um, their language assessments still the same. They're still going to take. They're going to take the stamp which is now administered in December. And the reason that it's administered in a different month in their eighth grade year is to determine their high school credits that they can earn. Um, the state of Delaware requires two credits of a world language to graduate from high school. But most of our kids, because they're in immersion, are able to um, qualify and earn that credit by taking the STAMP test in their eighth grade year. Um, again, they'll have another opportunity in May to take the advanced placement test. Um, and again, the score lower than three or a score higher than three, that's what we're hoping for. Um, we'll get them into a ninth grade bridge program. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then again, the world language offerings, um, they can continue to take the level one course and complete another credit um, towards high school, um, or they can take another language. Of course, we wanna always encourage them to keep up their language um, learning. Okay, next slide. This looks a little confusing, so, so I'll talk you through the whole thing. So in ninth grade, and this is a little bit different, it might be new to some of our families, but in ninth grade, um, we uh, are offering our program at all three high schools, and we're doing that for a very simple reason, and that is for transportation. Uh, we know that a lot of our families, this is a choice program. You're driving your kids um, sometimes to multiple schools. Uh, sometimes all over the place to get them into their classes on time. It's not your feeder school. So we um, have taken that into consideration in planning for all three schools to have the continuation of the immersion program. So you could choose to have your child go into the, your feeder school um, and they could take a bus and they would be given all of, all of those things to, to get to school. Um, or you can keep them in you know, another school if you wanted to choice them into a different high school, that's fine too. They can still continue with their immersion studies. Um, so in ninth grade, they could, depending on their stamp scores and on the AP scores, uh, they would either be put into an advanced placement Spanish or Chinese language course. And this is the actual AP class that they would get prepared for to take the AP test again. 
Um, they're going to be given, and you're going to hear a lot about this in a minute, they're going to be given the opportunity to choose a pathway, which we hope to infuse more language opportunities into. So they'll be able to use their Spanish or their Chinese in their CTE area, um, which is their career and technical area. Um, or they can continue with the bridge program. And what the bridge program is, is a really unique opportunity to partner with one of our post-secondary schools in the state. So our district is partnered with Delaware State University. So we work very closely with them to offer college level courses for our students starting in the ninth grade, if they've earned that score of a three, four or five. So they would be taking, if they scored that and they continued on with their study, they would be in the bridge program, which means they'd be in a DSU dual enrollment course, uh, Delaware State University dual enrollment course. And that's kind of the last little piece you can see at the bottom of the screen here. So in ninth grade, if they got in that score in, in their head, they got that, that AP test score, they would be put into a Spanish or Chinese 250, which is a very unique course that actually um, DSU has built in collaboration with us for our students. Uh, this is called communication in a digital age. And then from that point on for every year, all four years that they're in high school, um, you can see the progression of the courses that they'd be able to take ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th grade. Um, so it goes from, you can see Spanish 301, Spanish 334, Spanish 305, and this just follows the catalog for Delaware State University and what they offer at the time. And then Chinese at the bottom, Chinese 305, Chinese Civilization, Chinese 301, Intermediate Chinese, Composition and Stylistics, and Chinese 334, Advanced Chinese Conversation and Language Use. So that's the bridge program at the bottom here. Um, at the end of 12th grade, what the, what DOE, which is, you know, gave us our grant, and this is the initiative from which we built this program on, um, they will be recognizing our DLI learners at graduation with a cord for the completion of an AP test. So if they've taken the AP test, regardless of their score, they'll be honored by DOE um, with a cord. Um, or, and also if they've taken four years of their language study. So if they continue in the bridge program and take a course every year, then they will have earned another cord. Um, your students will also earn the equivalent of a minor in either Spanish or Chinese. So they actually will leave high school with enough credits to qualify for a minor in DSU um, and in other universities, um, University of Delaware being another one that is signed on as a partner. Um, so that, though, that's kind of the, the projection of how this goes in high school. Um, we're in our ninth grade year right now. So um, we're kind of, we're learning all of this process and we're going through this process now and making all of the great decisions that we can with the best team here. But um, for right now, the, this is what the program looks like and we're really proud of the work that they're doing and what we're able to offer our students. Next slide. I'm gonna turn this over to Mike Trago. Thank you, Dr. Benevento. What a lot of great information and opportunities for our students. Um, so I'm Mike Trago, Supervisor of College and Career Readiness for the Apoquinimic School Districts. Um, and I'm here tonight to uh, talk about the pathway opportunities that uh, your student will have once they get to high school. So if you're unfamiliar with our pathways, uh, I, tonight I'm just giving a really brief overview um, and then we're going to talk about um, where you could get a lot more in-depth information um, at an upcoming event here soon. Um, so in the Apoquinimic School District, we have we offer 24 different pathways, um, 32 different AP opportunities for students. We have concentrations where students can offer concentrations um, or take a concentration that complements their pathway. And so what happens when a student gets to high school, actually it's gonna happen um, in January of this uh, eighth grade year for your student, they will pick a pathway. Um, they've been doing work. Um, you may have heard your student talking about uh, learning about pathways during their compass class. Um, and then we have the event coming up soon that we'll talk about. And then also in January, they're gonna have an opportunity to pick their pathway. So they'll they'll choose a pathway, um, one of 24 different offerings that we have. Um, within that pathway, there are four pathway courses that they'll take 
um, during their high school time over four years. So um, they have 32 different course offerings when they get to high school. Four of those are pathway courses. So um, we're also going to chat a little bit about what that looks like, um, where they get a lot more electives than they do pathway courses. And then I just want to dispel any thoughts or, or um, concerns you have around pathways where students are able to change their pathway once they get to high school. I mean, even, even when they're in high school in their ninth, 10th grade year, um, there are opportunities. So they're not stuck with whatever the choice they make um, in January. So this information that you see on the screen now is actually from our course catalog. The course catalog is available on all of our high school websites as um, in addition to our district website. And it's also available on appocccr.com. And that stands for APO College and Career Readiness. So APO CCR is a great resource for everything college and career related. Um, I will say that the pathways are designed to lead directly to um, employment, um, two-year or four-year institutions. So they offer a broad approach to um, whatever um, industry that they select. Um, so you can go directly in. So if you choose, and I'm going to go to the next slide, please. Um, and we're going to look at um, the different pathways that we have in our district. You can see here, these are half of them, and then we'll show you the other half in a second. Um, but let's take School of Health Sciences. We have a healthcare science pathway that would lead directly into an employment in the healthcare field. Uh, maybe a two year if you're thinking about being like an x-ray technician or something along those lines. Or if you're looking to be a, a nurse or a doctor of some kind, um, this would be a great pathway for you. Um, next slide. And here's a look at the rest of our pathways um, that we have available. And just give you a moment to look at that. So again, you can go to APOCCR and you can um, dive through each one of those pathways and what those entail. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna pass it over to our um, director, Nick Hoover. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks, Mike. Um, I'm the director of secondary curriculum instruction and assessment, and uh, I'm actually just here to reiterate some of the things that Mr. Trago uh, explained all, already. You can see those on the previous slides, um, but I, I wanted to dive in a little bit to what these pathways look like. If you look at that first column, um, each pathway, when you break down that pathway, Mr. Trago had mentioned that there's a lot of liberal arts um, electives, which we'll, uh, we'll show you a screen of what that looks like here in just a few minutes. Um, of course, you're going to take your pathways. And again, Mr. Trago talked about that there's four uh, pathway courses uh, throughout your time in school. Each of these pathways also come, uh, come along with work-based learning experiences, something called the capstone project, which is towards the end of, of um, high school. And all of them come along with advanced standing courses, as well as options for accelerated learning. And again, we'll take a look at that in a, in a minute. Uh, Mr. Trago also explained a little bit here about um, that our pathway courses, they are aligned to industry standards, um, as well as two-year and four-year college majors, and based on jobs in the field. And I think that's really important to note. Um, we are not trying to have students who are, you know, seventh and eighth grade, we're not trying to have them pick their career the rest of their lives. Um, but this is an opportunity for them to... Um, to, to pick something that they enjoy. And these are, again, all aligned to industry, um, jobs, as well as college majors. Next slide. So we're gonna break down, um, you know, just an example of what this looks like. I'm gonna take this first slide here and then Mr. Traco is gonna jump back in. As we mentioned about the liberal arts electives, you see here that, uh, as we mentioned, there are four pathway courses but there's actually a, a, an opportunity for six and a half additional elective credits. Um, so this really gives you an opportunity to take a wide variety of courses. 
that um, you know that you can try out. They're going to give you a, a, a different learning experiences, different um, selections based off of your interest. And why I think this is really important and somewhat unique with uh, Apoquinamink is that this helps create a unique transcript. And we know that not every student is looking to go to a two-year or four-year college. But what we want to do is provide the absolute best transcript that we possibly can for all kids. Um, and that's going to help them in their future. So by being able to take their pathway courses and being able to take different elective courses, we're really helping create a unique transcript for that student. And, um, and I think that that is really key. It's something we've been focused on for years. And, um, and I think it's something that we do pretty well here in, in Apoquinamink. I'm going to throw it back over to Mr. Trago and I'll be back in a minute. Yes. Yeah, so all those options that Mr. Hoover just talked about, you're not going to find that at, at most high schools, um, not only in the state of Delaware, but really across the country. We have um, lots of options and opportunities for students. Um, but I just wanted to highlight a couple. Um, this is not pathways. We have a couple of pathways that we, we just extracted out of the book um, as an example. So I'm going to walk through just an example of what this may look like if a student chose one of these pathways. I talked a little bit earlier about the healthcare science. So they will take um, a level one course um, called Intro to Health Careers. That is um, an apoquinomic course. Then they move on to Fundamentals of Health Science. That is a Dell Tech Bio 100 course. Um, and then moving on to Essentials of Health Careers where they really get a lot of hands-on um, in the classroom, uh, similar to level one. And then in level four, they would take um, what, what the courses are at Dell Tech is Bio 110 or Bio 120. So the little four next to it, next to anatomy and phys means that's a dual enrollment course. So students have options. They can either take a college level curriculum, Bio 120 at Dell Tech and earn that college credit. I did see a question in the chat and I want to, uh, about dual enrollments and, and transferring. So when it's a dual enrollment class, um, or really anytime it's a college level course, we, we're a high school, we can't necessarily say for sure if that co if, if another college halfway across the country would accept that course or not. Um, there's a good chance, and we um, talk a lot about how to advocate for those credits, um, but just as if you graduated and went to that college um, after, and then you tried to transfer those credits somewhere else, that's a conversation between the college and the other college that, that we can't guarantee. What we do stress, however, is taking college level courses, um, if they are articulated, or if they're dual enrollment, or if they're AP, those courses are really important for the transcript um, to get you into the college. If we are looking to apply for a college that's selective or highly selective, that's where this really comes into play. So I chose these two he um, here to highlight because um, of, of a conversation that we had with Penn State University. These two pathways, in particular, along with some others like engineering, if the students take these courses because they're unique and because they're rigorous, um, they will get into some of the colleges just based on the rigor, the level of rigor that they're taking. So it's great if, if it counts as a college credit and that's, that's less courses that you have to take when you get to college. But more importantly, it will help get you into the college. So if you're applying at a selective or highly, highly selective college or university, having these courses on your transcript um, is key for the admissions process. Next slide, please. And, and just to look at two other um, courses that, and so I wanted to highlight the education and leadership. Um, so for example, if you were to look at that pathway, and this is, getting into the field of education, either as a teacher, um, you know, or another position that we have at the school and eventually um, hopefully a principal or school leader. These um, courses like creating environments 
for Learning is a three credit course at Wilmington University. AP Psychology, if you take and pass the AP exam, is three college credits. Um, and then the next course is uh, six college credits. And then the capstone course is another three. And then if you look in the book, you'll see how you can earn, um, you can really build a transcript um, for this college. This happens to be tied to Wilmington University. Um, and then computer science is also a great option um, if you're looking to get into the STEM field. But any of our 24 pathways has college level courses that are articulated or has AP or has dual enrollment and are all great for the transcript. All right, so I'm gonna um, pass it back over to Mr. Hoover at this time. Yeah, I just wanna reiterate something that Mr. Trago uh, said there, um, just from my own personal experience with my daughter uh, going to college in the last couple of years, um, you know, we experienced where some of her dual enrollment and AP courses um, transferred over to cover that uh, class. So if that was an English class, it might cover an English credit um, at the school. We also had an experience where that was considered they took the credits, but they were elective credits. And we also had an experience where they didn't take the credits. So again, I want to reiterate what Mr. Trago said there, that there's no guarantee that every college is, is um, you know, taking all of those credits. But number one, it's, it's boosting that um, unique transcript. I think number two, it's really important too, to say that that's, those are rigorous courses. And number three, it does give you a good chance at, you know, transferring over to many different schools. Um, and why that ties into this next slide here, you know, we're talking about advanced standing courses. And again, I think this is something in Apoquinemic we do very well. Um, we have, uh, all, all of our students have access to over 80 plus advanced standing courses. As you heard already, that could be dual enrollment, articulated courses, AP courses. Um, now for our immersion courses, you can see actually the bridge program, which again, Dr. Vianivento already mentioned before, but you can see some of those courses here below. Um, these are directly connected to uh, Dell State. And um, you know, so, so when students finish those courses, they get credits from Dell State directly. Uh, and you can see those courses there. But I really think the important piece here, again, is that um, these advanced standing courses are obviously rigorous and that, you know, helps with educational purposes. But it's um, it's also something that can help set your uh, your student apart from others across the country, um, again, with the amount of offerings we have. Um, before I pass it over to Mr. Perry from um, Odessa High, I just wanted to put in a plug. I think it's been mentioned a couple times here that uh, we have, um, we talked a lot about pathways. We have pathway preview nights coming up soon. Um, and I think this is really important event for people to, to come. You all are getting a little bit of a preview of the pathways here because you're immersion families. Um, however, pathway preview night, they, they are important. Um, we have our uh, Pathway Preview Nights at Appaquinemic High School will be on Wednesday, November 6th. Odessa High School will be Thursday, November 7th. And Middletown High School will be Wednesday, November 13th. This is pretty much geared towards eighth grade families moving into uh, to ninth grade. Um, so uh, please look out for the information from those schools. I'm going to throw it. Actually, I think Dr. Van Evento came off of mute here, so she might want to jump in before Mr. Perry. Yes, um, I appreciate that. I wanted to just clarify something in terms of the all three high schools. So for Spanish immersion, we are offering the Spanish immersion students the opportunity to go to any high school to continue into the bridge program. For Chinese immersion, it has always been um, that Fairview campus would be the home of Chinese immersion. So for Chinese immersion students that are here, or for families that are here with their children in that program, they would be going to Odessa High School. So Odessa High School at, at one point will have both Spanish immersion um, bridge program and also um, the Chinese immersion program. And the, they'll have all the languages, let me just say that. So they'll have both programs there. But um, I just wanted to be clear because I don't think I was clear in the last part that I spoke about that um, all of the students in Chinese immersion will be staying on that campus and their high school articulated in the MOU with the state is Odessa High School. So I just wanted to say that before passing it off to Brant, who is one of our assistant principals at Odessa High School. And we'll be talking a little bit about 
what a high school schedule looks like and how scheduling is done at that level. So now I'm gonna to toss it to Brent. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so families, this is very much more focused on the eighth graders as you guys are gonna start planning your ninth grade experience. Uh, I'm not gonna read through this, you know, you have a copy of this, but just a couple footnotes here. Um, all three high schools follow a very similar format. Um, you can take a course that is either A or B day, which is every other day throughout the entire year, or a semester course, which is half year um, every single day. That provides us a little flexibility with scheduling, because as you'll see here in a minute, uh, scheduling at the high school level is quite a bit different than your middle school and elementary experience. Um, bottom line on that middle paragraph is, you know, we, we do offer quite a few courses really focused on the pathways and the experiences that they, they gather. Um, you'll be, you, you could become, come across some tough decisions as what to take, uh, but you'll have counselors meeting with you, I believe, starting, you'll get information in January and then February, they'll be meeting in March. So there'll be plenty of opportunities to connect with your counselors on what the best process is and best course selection. Um, in addition, it hasn't been determined yet, but there will be courses offered in the summer that can alleviate some of that strain. Uh, typically, there's a, a health PE course. I think last year there was a geometry course offered, uh, but that'll be coming down the pipe as well. Um, and then the bottom here is a snapshot of a kind of a standard, a standard course. You'll see that some of them are cycles on the right-hand side there with an A and B day. Um, and that is for market periods uh, one and two or three and four. And then some are A day for the entire year and B day for the entire year. On a side note, you'll, you'll see that most of the core classes are A day or B day the entire year to give the students exposure to those core content areas such as ELA and math so they're prepared for the various testing items that come along. Uh, again, that's pretty much it for me. I think uh, Dr. Vianivento, you're up next again. Yes, actually, we're going to hear from Julie Latterbauer, who's from our choice office. She's our choice specialist. I'm sure she sounds very familiar to you. And she's going to talk a little bit about how this choice process works for our uh, Spanish immersion families. So, Julie. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so this is really for our eighth grade parents at Meredith that are in Spanish immersion. Um, the choice window opens on November 4th at 8 a.m. and closes on January 8th. So if you do not want to attend your feeder school for high school, you would do your choice application during that process. Just make sure that when you're doing that application, there is a question on there that says, are you a Spanish immersion eighth grade student? Make sure you click that box um, and then you will be a guaranteed a spot at um, the high school that you choose. Um, the only thing is if you attend your feeder school, you will get a bus. Um, if you get choiced in, um, it's not guaranteed, but we do do the best that we can to get you a spot within the feeder pattern of that school. Um, and also if you are um, applying for choice and you are in our district, you do not um, need to attach um, attendance, discipline and grades. I just look at that information um, for you. And um, the only other thing, I know there's some Chinese immersion folks on here. Um, you will not do an application when you're going from eighth to ninth grade. You will automatically just go to Odessa High. And I guess up next is Jen Campbell. Hi, everybody. My name is Jen Campbell, and I am the World Language Specialist for Apoquinimic School District. Um, I handle stamp testing at the high school for our World Language team, and I also coordinate the Certificate of Multiliteracy um, for our district students. So I'm here to talk to you about these two opportunities and how they translate to the high school experience as an immersion student. So our state requires uh, two years in a language or a novice high proficiency on the stamp test to meet the benchmark for the state requirement. So immersion students typically and should enter high school having met those language requirements. So we use your stamp score in eighth grade. Um, we look at the composite score, not just one skill. We look at all four skills and that composite score determines how many credits you earn in high school. So you can see the breakdown here. As long as you get a three on the stamp, which is novice high proficiency, you will earn those two credits and meet the state and district graduation requirement. If you get a four on the stamp test, you will be awarded three credits. And anything that's a five and above, you will be awarded four credits. 
So the transcript will indicate that the credits have been awarded by meeting proficiency targets as demonstrated on the stamp test. And then a score of five or above in all individual skills would actually meet the state requirements for the language side of the certificate of multiliteracy. Next slide, please. So certificate of multiliteracy, this uh, Delaware Department of Education has established this certificate of multiliteracy to recognize high school students who have gotten a certain level of proficiency in one or more languages in addition to English. So your students will have hopefully already done that on the Spanish side, um, and then we just have to get their English scores to be able to give them the certificate. So we take their eighth grade stamp score, and if they've gotten a five in all four skills, they're eligible for the gold level if they meet the English benchmark. They're eligible for a diamond level if they get a seven on all four skills. The other indicator for a certificate of multiliteracy, if for some reason they don't get that five on the stamp score, but they've scored an, a three or a five on the AP Spanish language and culture exam, they're also eligible for the Spanish side or when it comes time, the Chinese side of things. The English requirements I put at the bottom because um, I just want you to see all of them and they're also on the Department of Education website. But the one that is, pertains to you most is the rating of a three on the eighth grade state assessment for English language arts. Um, so that's your smarter balance score. If you get a three or higher in eighth grade, then you would enter high school with that certificate of multiliteracy, assuming that you scored a five or higher on the stamp test. Um, the other three criteria are for our either multilingual learners or our students who take the PSAT or SAT um, in high school. And then at that point, they would get that certificate based off of that criteria as well. Um, so one thing that I do want to note, if you could go to the next slide, please. I'm going to go out of order real quick because I'm just talking about this right now. The scores do stay with your student. So say they met the criteria on the Spanish side, but didn't quite earn a three on the smarter balance in eighth grade. They would have an opportunity to earn that English side again when we do the school-based PSAT or SAT. And as long as they meet that criteria sometime while they're in high school, then they would be awarded that certificate of multiliteracy. Um, so just to give you a couple of data points here, um, this, this really excites me. So I was looking at these numbers today and it kind of made me really happy, but we have 32 students in the class of 2028 who earned that certificate of multiliteracy in or before ninth grade. Um, we have approximately 40 students who are in that class of 2028 that are on the waiting list. And I have a list um, of students who are either waiting for their English criteria, meaning that PSAT would be their next opportunity, or maybe they just need one or two skills in Spanish because they've gotten a uh, five or higher on three or out of four skills, but we still just need to retake the speaking or maybe the writing or something like that. Um, and I put them on a list and I'll contact them um, to see if they're interested in earning this certificate. So we do test um, twice in the school year. We do an optional testing round in the fall and we do another round in the spring. And then when they do earn that certificate of multiliteracy, there are three different pull down or data pull downs in the year where the state pulls that data that we put in and they send those certificates off to um, the school districts and we deliver them to your students. So about 30 days after they take the, the or after they're awarded the certificate of multiliteracy, they receive a certificate delivered to them at school. But then when they are seniors, they get this medal here, which I took a picture of and put on the slide. Um, they get to wear that at graduation. So that's really cool too. So I put my email address down here. Obviously, if you have any questions right now, you can put them in the Q&A, but if you wanna jot down my email address for any future questions about certificate of multiliteracy during your high school career, you can certainly jot that email address down and I'll be happy to help you. All right, and I think that's it for me. All right, hi, I'm back. <laughs> so just to talk about um, the AP exam, just in a little bit more detail, um, again, this is for uh, primarily our sixth, uh, seventh um, families that have not taken it and eighth grade families that are interested in this, um, or those of you who want to stay on and, and still talk. Um, can you go forward to the next slide, please? So just to kind of boil this down, um, we want really the students that are, and, and the buildings are going to get on here and talk about what the process is to register your student for an AP, but just so that we're all clear, 
Um, students interested in taking DLI courses for the bridge program, which is the continuation of the immersion program in high school. Um, these are students that we would recommend take the AP exam. Um, again, these are, we're looking for scores of three, four, or five. We really would prefer a score of four or five. We'll take a three, but it's, a stu it's really uh, a little bit more nuanced with a three in that we have to have a, a teacher recommendation. We look at the report card, we look at stamp scores. So it's a little bit more of a process, but um, that those are the three scores we're looking for to enter into that bridge program. Um, so that's the first group. Um, students who should take the AP are those that have not previously taken the AP test and would like the exposure or the practice. So this would be for our seventh grade students um, at taking it in seventh grade year, which is the first time they'll have this opportunity in middle school. Um, or students who would like the recognition from DOE of their immersion career. Um, as I said before, one of the ways that DOE is going to recognize the achievements of our students is by awarding them a core to graduation. So this would ensure that they get that, that second cord or that whatever they're working on, they would get a cord from DOE saying that they have taken the AP test. Um, again, the debt was just, I wanted to be very clear before we go into the next set of um, speakers who are going to talk about what the process looks like at their buildings. So we do have um, Meredith Middle School and they are going to talk about what the AP timeline looks like for them and um, how they would like, and I know they've already communicated some of this out to the parents already. So um, they're gonna talk a little bit about their process now. Hi everybody, um, my name is Olivia Suhanik. I'm the instructional coach at Meredith. I'm sure some of you have already heard from me before. Um, if you have ex experience with taking the AP test. Um, so what we created this year was something more visual for the family so that you could see sort of when the dates are and when things are due and when the cutoff points are. So um, tonight we're having the webinar, obviously, and um, the on-time deadline for registering for the test is November 15th, which is why we made the choice to come into the classrooms and talk about some of this earlier on so that we tried to give you as much time as possible to make the choice if you do want to take this test. Um, there is a difference between on time and late, and that involves a fee that is automatically added by College Board. Um, that's not something that we're in control of changing. Um, and the College Board date test is May 15th for the students that are taking the Spanish test. At Meredith, the CHIM test is a different date, um, and our time slot is 8 o'clock in the morning to 12 p.m. in the afternoon, and it does take the entire time to take this test. If your students have taken it before, it is a lengthy test, and they persevere through it, and they do a great job, but it does take the entire time for them um, to do that. Uh, the papers that we sent home obviously are not the digital clickable links, so we also followed up with an email from um, our assistant principal, Allison Phillips, uh, she sent that email out. Could you go to the next slide for me, please? Thank you so much. Um, so I was in the classrooms on 10-1 for eighth grade and 10-3 for seventh grade. And I just went through this process with the kids. Um, some of them were very excited to see me and others were like, no, don't tell my parents about this. Um, so for for College Board, they really do prefer to speak to the families. The school is not really allowed to call and talk about family data, family emails. So it really does have to go through the families for creating the accounts. We tried to break this down for you and make it as easy as possible. There's basically three groups of people. All the way at the bottom of the sheet that was sent home, you have a College Board account. You just need to connect with this year's test code. Um, that's the easiest of the three. The one in the middle is my kid is in eighth grade now. I'd like to take the college board exam, make an account, connect with the test, pay for the test, wait till the test is coming in May. The one all the way at the top is the seventh grade one. And that's the most complicated because of your student's age. Um, we have consent forms and certain requirements that we have to follow for them creating an email address. The biggest thing that I try to say to them a lot is you cannot use your apposchooldistrict.com email, although it's not really an email. The kids think that it looks like one. Um, it has to be something that is outside of Apo in case you travel to other schools within the state. You want to be able to access that college board information throughout um, 7th through 12th. 
Um, the next thing you would do once you have your account and you followed all those steps and you've activated it, sometimes they send you an email to activate that too. Um, and it takes a couple of days for that to happen. You would connect with our exam code. I made a different code this year for seventh grade and for eighth, just to kind of keep things straight in my own brain. Um, and then you would pay for the exam on time payment is $99. Um, and then late orders, which would be submitted on March 14th only, um, adds a, an and additional forty dollars to the um, to the tab on on that. You can pay on our website online, or you can send in a check to the office, and checks can be made to EMMS. I think that's all for Meredith. And we know this is um, a first opportunity for Cantwell's Bridge for our students that are there in their seventh grade year. So um, we do have um, Dora Veit, who's going to talk about what the process is for the COBRAs. All right. Thank you so much. So good evening. Um, I'm Dora Veit. I am the instructional coach at Cantwell's Bridge Middle School. Um, and so this is our first year that our Chinese immersion students will have the opportunity to take the AP test. Um, so because this is our first year, the process of getting us started um, has been taking a little bit longer. Um, so you're going to bear with us and be patient, please. And thank you um, as we are still waiting for our code um, to then provide you a little bit more information. But as of right now, October 29th, tonight, this is where we're giving you some new information for you. Um, and then November 15th is the on-time deadline for registration. For March 14th, that will be our late deadline um, with a $40 fee. And then our AP test is scheduled for May 9th. And it is a two-hour test. We will start at 12 p.m. and end at 2 Next slide, please. Um, so just similar to what um, Meredith shared, uh, you will have to set up an account. And again, that information, that account will need to be not the student's current Google account. You'll set up the account. There'll be two options, whether your student is under 13 or over 13. And again, you'll need to email or fax that form back to the College Board directly. Then you will then use the code to sign up with our seventh grade section. And then the last step, you'll pay for the exam. You can either go to our website or by check, and then we'll be submitting those orders for you. And again, we'll follow up once we have that code and we can send out additional information for you. Um, but if you do have questions in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you. Um, we know that we gave you a ton of information from a variety of, of people at different levels, um, and we're all here to support your students um, and in support of the program as well. Like I said before, we're really proud of these kids, and we're really excited about what the program looks like in middle school and high school. Um, we, I visited a bunch of classrooms today, and the language level that they're able to to achieve is, is just something that's so unique and so special. So we, we love bringing these opportunities to you and being able to present them as well. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you had um, a couple other points uh, to contact if you do have additional questions. Um, so you can send any questions you have about the presentation or any of the information that we gave you today uh, to ASD underscore immersion at apo.k12.de.us. Um, I know that Julie, talked about the choice process, which is pretty simple, but this is uh, the email address for choice, choice at apo.k12.de.us. Um, are there any questions um, that we have? Actually, we could stop sharing now. That would be that would be fine so that we're all on screen. And then are there any questions that we have um, right now or that um, you're thinking of and want to type to the q and I'm going to just wait a minute to see if there are questions that come in. All right, I do see that we have one about how will the school offer support to help kids prepare to take the test? This is an excellent question. Um, the AP themes and skills are worked and weaved into our curriculum in both Chinese 
uh, language arts and in Spanish language arts. So these skills are something that they practice in the classroom. We've also been lucky enough to have very dedicated teachers that were able to meet with students after school, um, have worked with a small group of kids um, in other areas of their, of their day to really practice those skills, have test questions, get feedback. Um, and currently um, our ninth grade class, we have a dedicated coach that is doing after school um, sessions with our students live and in Zoom across all three high schools to get them prepared for the AP test in the spring. So th these are some of the ways that we've tried to infuse those AP skills into the curriculum that they're already getting. Just reading through the chat. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit behind on this, on the question and answers, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, there is not an update yet on the immersion transition between Meredith and Reading. I know that the surveys were handed out and I believe they, that everyone that was given the surveys has two weeks to um, complete that survey. Um, we have not heard the results of that yet. I think that's actually this Friday, but um, I'm not sure. But, um, but I think that they've been given two weeks and I think the two weeks is Friday and then the communication will be from um, district office. Did I answer everything in there? <laughs> okay, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Oh, I lied. Okay, hold on. <laughs> um, I'm not. Sh I'm not exactly sure what the transition will be. I'm sure that there will be a communication that will talk about the results of the survey. Um, and then I know that the team, um, Dr. Burroughs and the team that um, had the original meeting, I know that they are getting together and talking about what the next steps are. But for right now, I'm not, I'm not sure what those are um, in terms of the survey. I think they're just waiting for the results to come in so that we can all plan what those next steps will be. So I'm not sure if that looks like a meeting or a Zoom or a, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure at this time um, what that plan will be. Anything else for the good of all of us here today? I want to just say thank you to all of the panelists. Getting all these people on one Zoom is, is very hard. So I appreciate all of you being here extra hours. Um, I want to say thank you to all the families who are here and supported our program. Um, again, we look forward to seeing your kids in classes and we look forward to their career in immersion. Um, we're here to provide them support, whatever that may be, all along the way. So please don't hesitate to reach out at any time. Um, we understand and we know that this is a lot to take in. So please just let us know your questions and we'll be happy to support. But if that is all, um, then we really want to thank you for being here and thank the panelists. And um, thank you to our interpreter um, who's been here and was helping us with the ASL interpreting. Um, and thank you very much for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Go Yankees. <laughs> thank you.